Hi, I'm Blah, and I want to do a guide on SAD spam and Sunbreak. So SAD spam is just the style of Sword and Shield and just spamming this SAD ultimate move as much as possible um, and trying to land it as much as possible. Um, the reason why I want to do this guide instead of pointing to other guides is because I think a lot of other guides on Charge Blade are really good at teaching the basic moveset, um, but sometimes they don't really quite put all the ideas together. They don't tell you like all the options you have in scenarios, and they don't tell you like which options are better in which scenarios. Um, and also sometimes they're kind of split. They kind of split their focus between Savage X and and SAD spam. And I just want to focus on SAD spam because it's my personally preferred style. Um, and like if you don't know your defense options, Charge Blade can actually be a pretty frustrating weapon. Um, you know the worst thing that can happen to a newer player is they get hit after trying an SAD. Uh, they have to refill their files, they're stuck in axe mode, they try again, they whiff again, it's, it's miserable, right? But as a peak, right, you are constantly having your shield charged, you constantly have your files charged, um, you are always never taking like too much recoil, um, and so like whenever a uh, monster is ready to be SAD'd, you're in position to do it, you're, you're ready to capitalize. So with all that being said, um, yeah, that's why I want to make this tutorial. Um, I'm not going to be going over the basic moveset. Um, there's other guides for that. Um, also, you know, if you want, you can just like kind of look at the button inputs I'm doing on screen if you need to. Um, and I'm going to be going over a lot of small details and just like small options that you have in scenarios. So um, I don't want to overwhelm people with details, but um, hopefully, you know, you can just kind of sleep on these um, and then just slowly implement these into your gameplay. And hopefully, uh, as you implement and improve your gameplay more, um, the style will become more consistent. Okay, so just a quick note on skills. Um, so if you're running SAD spam, you should have one level, uh, at least some level of guard. Um, guard 3 is kind of the standard because with guard 3 and a guard point, you should be able to guard most moves in the game and then retaliate with an SAD. Guard 5 can be a little bit excessive. Um, there are a few moves where you need guard 5 in order to retaliate with an SAD, even with a guard point. But even for those, you are you might be better off just kind of peak performance in the move or just avoiding it altogether. So for those for that reason, I would, I would give guard 3 a shot and then uh, try to implement guard points into your gameplay if you're not already. Um, Rapid Morph 3, so some people don't want to run uh, investment into Rapid Morph 3 because ostensibly it only takes some time away from your um, SAD animation. But it's kind of like the equivalent of Quick Sheath for Longsword, but for Charge Blade, right? It makes your Charge Blade um, SAD come out slightly faster and it ends slightly earlier, right? So it makes it both safer and more likely to land. And that's a big deal, right? Because um, you'd be very surprised at how many times a monster will just barely get out of the way. And if your Rapid Morph animation was just slightly faster, um, you would you have been able to land the SAD. So um, we want to hit our SADs consistently. And the, the difference between landing an SAD, causing the monster to stagger, break a monster part, or get stunned, the difference between that and whiffing an SAD uh, getting hit, having to heal, having to refill your files, is is you know light years apart, right? So it's really important, and there's a good reason why it's the consensus overall. Um, low shells too is really really important. You need to you need it to make it so that you only need to reach yellow in order to refill your files completely. Uh, guard up, you don't need this for every single monster, but it's nice to have. Uh, basically, it makes normally unblockable moves like Rajon Rajon's laser, I believe and some others um, able to be guarded. Uh, evade extender is really nice. Um, it's not necessary, but I like it as a comfort skill. And then flinch free is for multiplayer. Go over switch skills. So morph slash versus counter morph slash. There's really no reason to run morph slash, you know, unless you really are used to the old muscle memory. But counter morph slash is really, really good. It makes your file stronger. It makes your guard point, uh, like, windows a lot bigger and also when you're in axe mode it puts the like guard point at the beginning of the animation which is really useful because that means it's a lot easier to time um so yeah i'm just going to be swinging counter warp slash for a variety of reasons 
Um, obviously, we're going to commit Elemental Slash because, you know, CSS is Savage Axe style. Um, so, firing pin basically just kind of puts like a file on the monster itself and then it'll explode when you do an axe move on it. Um, there's like no reason to run file follow up because it's it does less damage. I can maybe see the case if like you're fighting like a really hyper monster like Rajang or Seregios or something and you want the consistent damage of file follow up, but even then I have my doubts, so just run firing pin really. Um, so ready stance is obviously for Savage X style, so we're not going to talk about it. I'm going to be assuming that you're running counter peak performance. Um, Axe Hopper is definitely an option. This is one of the this is the only one where you have a choice really. But if you're just learning and you really want your gameplay to be really smooth and consistent, I would really recommend counter peak performance. Uh, it's a panic. It's a great panic option. So when you're running Axe Hopper, you lose this panic option in a lot of scenarios. And you know we're playing SAD spam, right? And if you want to spam it, you want to be able to fill your files as soon as possible, right? Something that people will say sometimes is that, uh, like in multiplayer, right? Um, counter peak performance is less useful, right? Because you know the monsters may be aiming for one of your teammates, so maybe you can't counter everything. And Axe Hopper is also nice in multiplayer because you can aim it, right? I think that's kind of overrated. Um, if you're playing well in multiplayer. You should be able to hit your SADs without having to rely on aiming with Axe Hopper. And Counter Peak Performance is still super, super useful in multiplayer. You know, you will hit this a lot in multiplayer. Um, so I will not sleep on it. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to be assuming Counter Peak Performance, if you feel really, really comfortable and you're, you know, you have you know, every, all of your options out of every single scenario with Charge Blade, you know, feel free to try Axe Hopper. But, you know, Counter performance is definitely the more consistent option, in my opinion. Uh, Air Dash is obviously only for Savage Axe, so I'm only going to be talking about more advanced here. But yeah. Okay, so that's the setup. Um, I'm not going to be going with the basic move set charge play. Like I said, I'm going to be going to this guide assuming that you already know most of that stuff. But just on a quick note, if you find if you're trying to like memorize combos, like Memorize, oh, I need to do X and then XA and then XA again in order to do an SAD. Or you're trying to remember, okay, I need to do X and then XA and then XA and then R to do, to charge my shield or whatever. I would encourage you to not, that you, you don't need to do that, right? Like, you only need to remember a few things in regard to combos. Uh, first thing, you can do a shield thrust after any sort of attack. So, V slash shield thrust. Yeah. Side slash, shield thrust. Fading slash, shield thrust. You know, even like elemental round slash, shield thrust, right? You can shield thrust after any move, or after any sword move. And then you can SAD or do an SAD like animation thingy out of any shield thrust, you know? So whether that's from here or whether that's from here, you know, or whether it's from you know, here, it doesn't matter. As long as you're doing that shield thrust, you can just press the shield thrust uh, combo again, or shield thrust like button combination again, and you'll just do an SAD. And then last thing is that out of any SAD, you can cancel it into an AED. You know, again, it doesn't matter how you start the SAD animation. Or you can cancel it into an elemental round slash. So, shield thrust after, out of, after any sword attack, SCD after any shield attack, and elemental round slash or AED after any SAD. So, loading files, right? So, loading files. So, to load files uh, completely, you need to reach yellow. And to reach yellow, you need to do a charge double slash plus any other slash. So, you know, there's several ways to do this. You can do a weak slash and then charge double slash. Or you can do a charge double slash first, and then do a spinning slash. Um, you can do an advancing slash, and then charge double slash, right? So this way is pretty fast, where you do the weak slash first. Uh, and it's what I used to do from Iceborne, because there you would do weak slash, charge double slash, and then spinning slash. But here that last slash is unnecessary. 
So just doing the charge double slash doing the spinning slash can be nice. Uh, the reason why it's nice is because um, you get the laggy move out first, which means you have more time to react, right? So if you notice the monster's attacking you while doing this, you can just immediately react with a counter more slash to guard point it. Or, you know, maybe you even like charge double slash, oh shoot, the monster's attacking me, and then you roll out of the way. Uh, another nice thing is that even if you get caught in this like spinning slash animation, this spinning slash animation has a guard point at the very end, right? So it's actually safer in some ways than the uh, weak slash and then charge double slash. Um, so I would definitely consider this if you're like starting out. Uh, obviously, if you want to close distance in the monster, you need to do an advancing slash. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, choose your choose your preference essentially. Um, other times that you would load your files, so. Here if I load here if I charge my shield, I'll do an element of round slash to charge my shield. Now the element of round slash has a sword slash at the very end. So that means since I attack the monster with my sword slash, I only need to do a charge double slash afterwards. So I hit the monster once, and then I charge, and now I'm up to yellow already. Another situation that might come up is that you may be guard pointing a lot. So let's say you've done some attacks you know, earlier on, and then at some point you guard point. You may find that your files are already yellow, and you don't need to slash the monster anymore, right? Usually, you know, you're not trying to guard point in order to fill your files, but if you're guard pointing a lot, um, your files will just become yellow naturally, just in some situations. And in that case, you don't need to bother even charging your files by slashing the monster. So that's also something to keep in mind. If your files are yellow, just just charge them immediately. There's no reason to go through that whole like song and dance. Um, and if you ever find yourself um, like not quite at yellow even after doing this on a monster, right? Sometimes that can happen if like you hit this slash and then you hit only one of these double slashes. Then if that ever happens to you, you know, if you're still not yellow after doing these, just sidestep and then spinning slash. All right, so for SAD spam in general, um, it's important that you have your shield always charged and you have your files um, completely filled and you're not taking too much recoil from moves and you're not having to heal. And so that means that basically when the monster finally does something that leaves them vulnerable, you're in position to retaliate with an SAD. So for those reasons, it's good to have a good understanding of guard points, uh, counter peak performance, and morphing advance. Um, so the most important guard point, um, and probably the first one you'll learn, is the sword to axe guard point. So this guard point, it's not like incredibly generous, but it's pretty generous. So as long as you you know actually try to time it a little bit, you'll probably get it. It's only like if you like really start early that you'll miss it. Um, so I think a lot of people know why this guard point is good. So the first thing you'll probably learn is that. Um, it reduces your recoil a little bit, right? So here I take a here I get knocked all the way back here, but then if I do a guard point, I only get knocked back a little bit, and it makes it more likely that I can retaliate with an SAD uh, because if the, if the move knocks you back too much, you just get re get re way too much recoil, and then you won't be able to do anything. Um, another reason why this is good, it has good synergy with counter uh, morph slash. Um, counter morph slash. So if you just do a guard and then SAD, um, files do pretty decent damage. So 650 there. But if I guard point it and then do an SAD, it does like 800 damage, right? So because of the way counter morph slash works, it does more damage. But more than that, it does even more damage than that because if you guard point a move, the guard point itself does damage. So that's really good. Um, I mean, it's better than the slash, for example, which only does 97 damage. Uh, that guard point did 113. So if you're hitting a lot of guard points consecutively, like, I don't know, is an ogre stomping you three times in a row, uh, that's like 300 damage off the bat, and that's just from defending yourself. Uh, in addition, uh, guarding in general slightly, uh, slightly charges your files. So you can see there, I already got to yellow. 
So if I just do the charge double slash and then I guard point, I'm already at yellow. Now you're not like trying to guard, you're not trying to charge your follows using guard points, but oftentimes if you find yourself guard pointing a lot, you'll just reach yellow naturally. So that's definitely a good thing to keep in mind. Um, so that way you can just charge immediately. Uh, perhaps more importantly, it's an amazing panic option. So if we just like do a move and then hold R, we have to wait out the entire animation. Because guard doesn't like cancel an animation, it just starts after an animation is done. So if I do this charge double slash, I have to wait a while until I can bring out my shield. But if I do a counter warp slash instead, I kind of bring out my shield immediately. So I'm attacking and then oh shoot, I realize the monster's about to hit me, and then I just immediately go into shield. I don't have to wait for that animation to complete. So that's really, really important. And with how fast the monsters are in Sunbreak, you really need uh, you really need like an option to shield immediately sometimes. Uh, when you combine this with counter peak performance, it makes it so that you can get up and close and personal with a monster and not have to worry too much about getting hit. Um, this can be done out of almost every single move. The big exception is that you can't do it out of charge. So if you try to charge, and then do it, you'll get a return stroke. So you can't do it out of this. So if you ever find yourself doing this and you're about to be hit, don't try to do a guard point. Try to just evade or kind of perform or something. But yeah, so obviously, uh, so guard points are really, really good and they should basically be your default for blocking moves in general, just because they re reduce recoil. So you're safer in general. You do, you do damage, you slightly uh, load your files. Um, you uh, can retaliate with an SAD if it's vulnerable enough. And yeah, I mean, it's just, and yeah, and just in general, even if you're not just guard pointing, even if you're just attacking them, like by doing this, for example, then in the middle of this combo, you can realize, oh, the monster's about to attack me, and then immediately retaliate, or immediately guard yourself with a counter morph slash. Um, there are some downsides. So, um, it does. It still uses your shield, so you will still take chip damage. And if you're guarding a move that does a lot of damage to you, like a supernova, then you'll take a lot of chip damage. Um, and also, it's like it does consume a lot of sharpness. Um, and even even with a guard point, there are some moves that are so powerful that uh, if you try to guard point them and then SAD, you just can't. So for some moves, you'll have to use a counter peak performance in order to SAD. Uh, the monster. So the next category of uh, guard points I want to talk about are the kind of what I call the round slashes. You know, um, basically, you know, they're all the ones where you kind of spin around, hit them with your sword, and then like put your shield up. So, for example, the spinning slash has a guard point at the very end. This fading slash has a guard point at the very end. The elemental round slash has a guard point at the end. A side step, spinning slash has a guard point at the very end. They all have guard points at the very end. And these ones are underrated. They're not useful because you're trying to hit them. They're useful because they exist and you can abuse them. Um, so why they're useful? If you're hitting one of these guard if sorry, if you're in the middle of one of these guard points and you notice the monster's about to attack you, a lot of times you can just hold. The monster's about to attack you. You may be tempted, oh shoot, the monster's gonna hit me, I'm gonna roll or evade. You know, you don't have to do that a lot of times. If the monster's about to hit you and you have this guard point out, you can just hold a lot of times. And it's even better than that, right? Because, watch what happens if I, you know, uh, hold R after doing one of these guard points. Okay, so that means basically that the monster, if it's going to try and hit me, it needs to hit me between the end of this guard point and the time I put my shield up, which is not very long, right? So that's really good, right? Basically, it means that you can just hold instead of evading. If you're stuck in the middle of one of these animations to have a guard point, you can just hold your position. But it's even better than that, right? Because it's, instead of doing the shield, you try to do the morphing slash, watch what happens. Guard point, guard point, still a guard point. 
right? So you kind of almost double, you know, the length of your guard point. So this makes any move that has a guard point pretty fucking safe, right? Because at any time during that animation of the spinning slash, at the end of the spinning slash and the start of the rapid morph attack, or sorry, at the start of the morph slash attack, you're guard pointing that entire time. So these are really useful, not because you're trying to hit them, because you can extend them into the, the card point of the Morph Slash. Okay, so the Axe Draw Attack. This one's hard to use, right? So at the very beginning of, you know, the animation where you're sheathed and you press R and immediately take out your Axe, there's a guard point. So why is this one useful? Well. If you've ever played Sword and Shield or Lance or Gun Lance, you'll know that there's a couple scenarios where you may want to shield immediately after being sheathed. You know, maybe you're not confident that you can roll away from an attack. Uh, maybe you don't want to quite commit to a Superman dodge. Maybe you can't even Superman dodge because you just drink a potion or something. Uh, being able to shield after, or sorry, being able to shield after being sheathed can be very nice. The problem, though, with Charge Void is that. When you press R, you don't shield, you take out your axe. Now, in theory, you don't need a shield, right? Because this move actually has a guard point at the beginning. Uh, the problem, though, is that this guard point is pretty precise, right? Uh, it's not like, it's not like frame perfect or anything, but it's, I find it kind of hard to hit, you know? Especially in the, the moments where I really need it, I find it kind of hard to hit. So in general, I find this to be the least useful, but sometimes it's literally your only option. You know, it's it, well, it's your only option when you're sheathed, right? For example, so if it's you know hit that guard point or die, yeah, go for it. But in general, it's it's pretty precise, so that one's the least useful. Finally, the last guard point is when you're in axe mode and you wrap a morph into sword. So I'm gonna go over how to escape axe mode later on, but. This one's primarily used for getting back into sword shield mode very safely. Now, this is super, uh, like, this guard point animation is super generous. It's crazy. Like, you can start it up, like, unbelievably early, and you'll probably hit it, you know? Like, for example, just watch how so early I start this. Like, it's crazy. So, Again, this one is mainly used to get back in sword and shield mode, uh, but it's, it's got a very generous window. Okay, so counter peak performance. I think everyone already knows why counter peak performance is amazing. It fills up your files immediately, so it can be a great opener to charge your shield immediately. Uh, but there's also other aspects that make it really good. You take literally no recoil, right? Even when you guard point something, you do get like knocked back a tiny bit, right? And like, uh, depending on the uh, the move, right? That can be enough to, you know, make you not be able to SAD the, the monster, right? Um, but there's all the, also other benefits, right? It's an amazing panic option. So it can be done at any time. Um, unlike the counter morph slash uh, guard point, right? If you remember, I was talking how this move can't be done out of this charging animation. If you need a panic after doing this, hit counter peak performance, you know, and you'll get your counter out very, very fast, right? Um, so yeah, it's an amazing panic option in addition to your guard points. If you're using guard points effectively and counter peak performance effectively, you'll have these panic options available to you uh, in a lot of scenarios. Um, another thing too is that um, if you hit the counter peak performance, and you just press, uh, you know, your sword attack. You'll charge your your sword, right? And oftentimes this is a lot easier than doing this. You know, this takes some time, and you know, it can kind of leave you vulnerable. Oftentimes, you know, it's just good to charge your shield, uh, charge your sword. You can counter performance. Another thing is that, like, sometimes moves, you know, you'll counter a move with counter peak performance and you won't quite have enough time to SAD, you know. So instead of retaliating with SAD, because you don't have the time, just char just recharge your sword, you know. Just reset, charge your sword, and move on. 
So there are some downsides. Obviously, it uses up a wire bug, so that's not amazing. Uh, but it does recharge, you know, decently fast. So I wouldn't worry about that part too much. Um, there are some moves where you still take like a crap ton of damage. Uh, so even though normally you take no damage, some moves you'll take a lot of damage. And so in those scenarios, you may want to consider just avoiding them altogether. You know, just roll or morphing advance instead. Uh, this attack also only protects from one attack. So if it's a multi-hit attack, you don't want to counter people from those because you'll protect from the first one, and then you'll you know take all the others, right? Take damage from all the other hits. Um, if you guard point those instead, you'll guard the first one and then you'll guard the rest, right? So in those scenarios where there's a multi-hit, you'll either want to consider evading, or you'll want to consider uh, guard pointing instead. And then another downside is that uh, basically out of character performance, you only have two options. Your only option is to either... Okay, I'm terrible. Uh, <laughs> your only option is to either, you know, set up the SAD animation, or to charge your sword, right? Which means, you know, you can't like... Uh... So if you hit this counter, right? You can't shield or war. You can't shield or roll, right? If you try to do those, um, you'll just be stuck in that lengthy animation. So, in certain scenarios, it's not the safest thing to spam, but in general, it's pretty safe. And like I said, it's an amazing panic option if you combine it with guard point. Between guard point, kind of peak performance, and you know, uh, evading slash uh, morphing advancing, you know, you should have a lot of options to escape any like scuffle. Okay, so when she guard point, when she counter peak performance, when she do evade, obviously, you know, uh, you know, when you're in the middle of a fight, you know, it can be hard to figure out exactly what you should be doing for particular moves. And I would say in general, you know, this kind of just comes with experience. The more you play the weapon, the more you'll have scenarios where you get hit and you're like, oh, I should have counter peak performance that, or oh, I should have guard pointed that, or oh, I should have morphing advance out of there, right? Um, so I'm not going to like put down a flow chart, but obviously, you know, when you're, I guess, analyzing or reflecting on whether you should have done one or the other, you know, here are some things to think about, right? So obviously you need a wire bug to use counter peak performance. That's one thing. Uh, obviously there's some moves that are not even worth guarding or counter peak performancing, especially if they, you know, deal a ton of damage, like, you know, Pyro Arachna Kadeki's like fire beam. Uh, in those situations, they deal so much damage that you don't even want to do either of them. You just want to fall out of the way. Um, or like, you know, for Valstrax's laser, you may want to just swing around with a morphing advance and just hit them from the side. Um, if you need to refill your files, counter peak performance is really nice. If you want to charge your sword, counter peak performance is really nice. Um, sometimes you can't even guard point. Like I said, out of this animation, you can't guard point. Uh, if it's a multi-hit attack, uh, you'll want to guard points instead of counter peak performancing because uh, you'll get hit if you counter peak performance. And also there are moves where like if you guard point, it'll put you in way too much recoil to, to counter with the SAD. And in those, those scenarios, you want to counter peak performance. Right? So those are all things to think about. Um, but in general, you know, guard point, a lot of things. Uh, and then counter peak performance when you want to fill up your files. Uh, charge a sword, or when guard point is not possible, or advisable, right? Uh, but in general, the reason why you guard point as a default is, again, because kind of performance uses a wire bug, and because of all the events I was talking about before, uh, you know, it deals some damage, it puts a file on the monster, um, and if you do an SAD out of it, you know, you deal more damage to your files. Okay, so axe mode. The most common time that you'll find yourself, you know, doing axe mode is like if you're trying to do an SAD and you get hit, right? So now I'm stuck in axe mode. Oh no, right? So to escape an axe mode, you have several options. Um, the one thing I would say is do not panic, right? Uh, if you panic and immediately rapid morph. Oh, sorry, if you panic and immediately morph slash, 
back into a sword and shield, uh, without any like thought process, you will often get hit, right? Um, the simplest way to get out of it is just to guard point another move. Just counter morph slash and you're back in sword and shield, right? Another way to get out of axe mode and you know you even charge your shield while you're at it, charge your sword while you're at it is just to kind of be performance it. Finally, um, if you really, really desperately want to get back to sword and shield mode, just like morphing events out of there and then spinning slash, right? Those are all much safer than just panicking and immediately, you know, morph slashing. Alright, so. So, speaking of morphing advance, you know, morphing advance is useful for a lot of reasons. You know, if the monster is downed because your teammates toppled it, you know, from a distance, then you can quickly get over there by morphing advancing. So it closes distance. That's really good. As I alluded to before in the whole, you know, section where I was talking about, you know, when you guard point, when to CPP and when to morphing advance, you can swing around a lot of attacks and just hit them, you know, just SAD them from the side instead of, um, you know, trying to guard point and counter them, you know. So for moves that are too dangerous to guard from the front, you can just often just morphing advance, swing around, and then SAD them. Um, it also has some hyper armor, so if the monster, you know, if you're really in a pinch and you need to escape, it has some hyper armor, you will take damage. Uh, so that can be, you know, that's something you need to pay attention to, but, you know, it can be nice in a pinch. So something that people forget about, some people forget about Morphing Advance is that it can be used to reposition your, S your SADs in general, right? So in particular, this is really important for elemental files. Um, elemental files, you know, if you don't know, they do different damage based on which part of the monster you hit. And for a lot of those, that's the head. For some, it's the wings, you know, whatever. But the point is that if you just naively, you know, start your SAD from the head, because that's where you always hit the monster with most of your weapons, you know, that's not gonna be the most damage you can do in a lot of situations, right? So there, the files are doing like 500-ish, and the total damage there was four, uh, 4,322. Now, watch what happens if I actually take the time to swing around from the other side and then aim towards the head. So all those files do like 977 damage and I do 5,400 5, damage overall. So even though I didn't do this beginning part, I still did more damage in the end. So for monsters like Rajang, which are small and you really want to be able to line up your files, uh, it can be very useful to morphing your advance to a position, turn around, and then uh, hit the files exactly where you want to hit them. So, next section I'm going to be talking about like neutral and quote unquote SAD fishing, which is like what I like to call like when you're kind of feeding for an SAD, but the monster isn't quite giving it to you. So, you know, you and the monster is just kind of chilling. You know, you're. You're attacking, the monster's like attacking you, you know, whatever, right? So like, what's your, what are your priorities? How do you get an SAD? You know, what do you do? So first of all, first priority is to charge your shield. Second priority is to develop your files. After that, you can charge your sword if you have an opportunity to do so. Uh, don't force it because this animation is quite lengthy. So don't force charging your sword, you know, only charge your sword if, you know, the monster gives you the time to do so, or you get a counter kind of performance, right? But don't force it, because this does take a while, and if you force it, you will get hit a lot of times. So, now that you've got these done, now what do you do, right? So, a very effective combo is just to do the combo of B-slash and Shield Thrust over and over again. So this is effective for a lot of reasons. It deals okay damage. Like, that's not bad, right? Especially like this shield thrust, right? That shield thrust is dealing like 300 damage per hit. That's not bad, especially if you're hitting it, you know, on a, on a weak spot, right? Um, it also builds up files, so when you finally 
are able to guard a move that leaves them vulnerable, you deal a sh crap ton of damage because all those files explode, right? In addition, you know, this combo, you know, it means that, you know, you can keep yourself relatively safe and if the monster, you know, starts to attack you, you can immediately transfer some kind of slash. And if it's a move that you can SAD, you can react to SAD. Or, alternatively, if you're doing this combo and then the monster attacks, you know, starts to attack your Palico or starts to attack like a teammate, you know, as it turns around, you can be like, oh, nice. And then you can just throw, throw out a raw SAD without even like having to guard point or anything because you know that the monster's going to be focused on your teammate or your uh, Palico or whatever, right? Uh, kind of a kind of similar concept is kind of spamming Fate Slash over again. This is less useful in solo play. You know, basically you're just kind of you're fiending for that SAD by kind of hoping that the monster goes for one of your teammates instead. And then when it does, you finally just like throw it out there. Right? So that one's less useful in solo play. But you know, if you're fiending for the um, SAD, you know, just kind of this is also a good strategy. You know, just kind of keep on swinging around. And then when the monster finally focuses on your teammates, you know, this way you're on the side of the monster, so the monster won't attack you, and the monster will attack your teammate instead, and then you can hit the SAD. So a quick note on canceling AED and uh, SAD into AED. Basically, you know, as you probably know, you know, you can cancel an SAD uh, not only by doing a morphing uh, elemental. Uh, round slash, but also by you know holding back and then in this uh, AED instead, right? So this has some benefits and also some downsides. So one nice thing about this is that it preserves files. Right? So you took all that effort to fill up your files, and you realize that an SAD is going to whiff, so you don't want to waste all of your files, right? So you cancel into an AED. Now. In Rise, especially, there's a couple problems with this. Um, one is that counter peak performance exists, right? So, wasting your files is not nearly as big of a deal as it used to be, right? So, that's one thing. Um, so, the other thing is that this move is still really laggy. So, okay, let's look at SAD. That takes a while, right? However, you know, let's try AD. Let's see how long this takes. That still takes a really long time. So if you're trying to do AEDs thinking it's safer than SADs, uh, it's not, okay? Like, it's just not. So in general, when I'm trying to when I when I start up an SAD and I realize last minute that oh I'm actually not going to hit this, um, or that the monster's going to attack me, I don't even go for ADs anymore. I just my really the monster's going to hit me and I just cancel it into a round slash, really. Um, and this is good for a lot of reasons, right? You recharge your shield. It, it's a lot faster, uh, so it keeps you a lot safer. It has a guard point at the very end. And if you need to refill your files, just counter peak performance again. You know, losing your files is not nearly as big of a deal as it is in other games. Um, that being said, you know it does have its uh, use cases, right? You know, although the animation length is not like that much shorter, if short at all, than SAD, the move itself, the attack itself, comes up faster, right? Uh, than the whole like slam. This this attacks a little bit later. So there are a couple scenarios where you can land an AED, but you can't quite land an SAED, right? So in those scenarios, it can be very useful, but it's it's definitely one of the more niche things, and it's kind of sad, but uh, yeah, AEDs are not as useful as they sound. Okay, so Couple of notes on Savage Axe. Um, obviously, this isn't like a Savage Axe guide. 
Um, there's plenty of other resources if you want to learn Savage Axe. It's overall a lot simpler. Uh, but there are a couple things to say. Um, for one, even though it is in some ways like a completely different weapon from SAD spam style, um, they do share some things. So they share, you know, loading files and charging your shield and stuff like that. So if you're trying to transition to charge blade, but you're not ready to make the dip into SAD spam style, or you want to, you know, I guess kind of half dip your toes into it, or just get used to some of the charging file mechanics in general, Savage X is a really uh, good option. Um, it's also a very valid option to kind of switch between uh, Sad style and Savage X style for some monsters, right? For some of the smaller monsters, if you don't want to go through the effort of lining up your files exactly where you need to hit them, um, or you just don't like, you just can't land all the files onto them, then Savage X style can be very good. Um, for some of the really hyper monsters as well, uh, like Rajang, um, like the fact that your moves come in the form of these small hits and not like a really committal SAD move can make the battle a lot more safer in general. It is less safe in the sense that you don't have access to your shield at all times, um, but it's safer in the sense that, like I said, you don't need to do an SAD. Um, and also like with Sunbreak, with this ready stance and the air dash, you have a lot more defensive options with Savage Axe now. So overall, it feels a lot less like um, on edge to play as it used to. Uh, and then also like, uh, if, even if you're playing SAD spam style, you do need to learn a little bit of Savage Axe just because, uh, at least right now, where the current meta is Dragon Conversion. Um, if you're playing Dragon Conversion. Um, you should probably learn a little bit of basic Savage Axe because the fastest way to get the elemental resistance uh, boost is to have Savage Axe on your blue scroll. So personally, I'm running, um, you know, uh, CSS, uh, Ready Stance, and Air Dash on the blue scroll. But you can really, uh, you can customize that. You can run uh, Morphing Advance over Air Dash. You can run uh, Counter Performance over Ready Stance, but for sure, CSS is the fastest way to get the resistance boost, so you should probably learn some Savage Axe if you want to play Dragon Resistance. Um, some miscellaneous notes. Um, this kind of applies to all weapons, but I thought I'd just kind of throw them out there. You can hold up to seven max potions in your inventory. Uh, you can do this by having two max potions in your inventory and then carrying some catalysts and ma magic auras so that you can craft the max potions on the go. And that effectively gives you seven max potions in your inventory. And that's really good because, you know, Cards Blade is, is a weapon where you'll be taking a lot of chip damage by shielding a lot. And, you know, um, you may throw out an SAD, which does a lot of damage, but the monster doesn't get staggered and then it hits you back. You know, you'll be taking damage. so. You'll definitely want to stock up on math discussions. Um, other, another miscellaneous thing. Again, this applies to all weapons, but it's pretty nice for charge blade because the sheathing animation is so long. If you start sheathing and you walk off a cliff, you'll immediately sheath. So you just insta sheath by walking off a cliff, starting your sheathing animation. So yeah, um, that's my guide on SAD spam style and in Sunbreak. Um, I know that there's a lot of details in here, and if you're a newer player or you're trying to get better, um, it can be a lot. Um, so hopefully you can just like sit on these and sleep on these, and slowly implement these into your gameplay as time goes on. And hopefully these will slowly, you know, make your ability to uh, hit monsters with SADs and just more quickly defeat monsters uh, more consistently over time. Um, yeah, it, a lot of this information also just, I think it's also almost necessary in some ways just because honestly the monsters in Sunbreak are pretty correct. They're really, really fast and sometimes the actual window for an SAD can be very fleeting. So when the opportunities do present themselves, you really need to capitalize. So yeah, hopefully this guide helps out with that. And yeah, thanks for watching.